drums, drummers, and the drumming industry. Hello, my name is Paul Rodney, better known as The Rod. I'm not an authority, nor do I claim to be. I played the drums most of my life. I've worked in artist relations for two drum product manufacturers. I served as a product tester at times and even took a stab at my own drum company. There's a unique bond between drummers unlike any other instrument which surpasses race, sex, age, and religion. It makes us a unique group of people. Drums are my passion. They are my life. Welcome to Rog Stock and Drums. Five Finger Death Punch signed. It's actually backwards right now, but this, we, we keep in mind we have a, a soft spot in our hearts for our dyslexic fans. Jeremy Spencer. He's a drummer and co-founder for one of the most popular and hardworking metal bands today. The band is Five Finger Death Punch, and they fully deliver. Jeremy grew up in Boonville, Indiana. It was not a hotbed for music in Jeremy's words, so he moved to Los Angeles because he felt that's where he needed to be in order to make it. He played in many bands, but was never satisfied. 
And one day, his roommate, Jason Hook, who is now the guitarist for Death Punch, told him that Wasp was auditioning drummers. Jason called his friend Daryl Roberts, who was a member of Wasp at the time, and would later become lead guitarist for Five Finger Death Punch in an earlier formation. He asked if Jeremy could get an audition for Wasp. Daryl set up the audition, and it came down to Jeremy and another drummer. After dueling it out, Jeremy became the new drummer, but the position only lasted for two weeks. The former drummer was asking to come back, and Wasp didn't want to work in a new drummer. Keeping his attitude positive, he went online to search for musicians looking to create shredding metal music. That's where he found Zoltan, founding member of Death Punch. He was looking for the same type of musician. They immediately started working together with a strong work ethic. They determined that any future members would have to give 110% as well, or they were out. After securing the lineup, they knew they were onto something when their debut full-length release, The Way of the Fist, sold 5,800 copies in its first week and debuted at number 199 on the Billboard 200. Their second release, War is the Answer, debuted at number 7 on the Billboard 200, selling over 44,000 copies in its first week of release. Band mediator, hardworking, positive, Friend are all words that are used to describe Jeremy from his fellow bandmates. Ivan, singer for Death Punch, goes on to add, Jeremy is my favorite part of this band. Guitarist Jason adds, Jeremy's playing is simple and technical, and live, he's a machine. Touring as a support and headlining act, Five Finger Death Punch have toured all over the world and have played some of the biggest metal festivals such as Download Fest and Mayhem Fest. When Jeremy came to town, he was two weeks into the Godsmack tour that featured both Five Finger Death Punch and Running Pool as support acts in 2010. The show had a lot of energy and we were privileged to be able to shoot the show. All live performances you'll see were captured by us. Hello everybody, this is The Rock. I'm talking with Jeremy Spencer of Five Finger Death Punch. How are you doing today, man? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing stellar. You're talking about your, your passion for double bass work. How did you develop that initially? You know, I struggle with it for a long time because a lot of it's mental and you're trying to just um, muscle your way through it. And really, you almost just have to quit thinking about it. And, it. and one day, I remember one summer, I think it was when I was like 17 or something, I just, it clicked over for me. And I was like, I noticed a level that went up substantially for me. And I was like, wow, okay, now it's starting to make sense. But it took me a while to struggle through. You know, you just have to learn it. And then one day it just happens. I have no magic formula. It just I just kept grinding and grinding and practicing and practicing, and one day it just kind of clicked in for me. Let's talk about a little bit about some of your early influences as a drummer, double bass. Can you tell me who originally got you fired up about drumming? When I first heard the Master of Puppets record, Lars, to me, was an exciting drummer. Uh, he was one of the first that really brought it to the masses, in my opinion. There was tons of other guys doing it, but he was one of the guys that, you know, we're out there really doing it on a level to where you would know who he was. Certainly Dave Lombardo from Slayer was a huge influence. Charlie Benante from Anthrax. Those guys, uh, they were like the pioneers. They were the first. So you're in support right now of Godsmack's latest uh, CD, The Soul, your supporting artist. Uh, tell me about this tour. How's it been going so far? Well, we're about week two, maybe, into it. It's going well. You know, we, we wanted to do this tour because it introduces us to maybe a lot of people that really haven't heard of Death Punch. It's a little bit of a different audience, so that's always a cool opportunity that we want to, you know, jump on board with. And it's been going well. They're cool guys. It's a really cool show, what they have. As I understand it, though, you guys are going into the studio in November for your next record. Is that correct? This is the last tour before that. Yeah, well, I mean, we are going to go home and hopefully take a couple weeks off, and I kind of want to relearn where the dishes are in my house and stuff, because I haven't really been there much since I bought the house. But, um, yeah, then we will get together and make record number three. I'm excited to see where it goes. Because we really don't plan it out, we just get together and let it come out the way it comes out. So we'll see. I mean, who knows? Maybe there'll be a bunch of uh, oboes and ukuleles <laughs> on the new Death Punch record. No, I doubt it. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> well, how involved are you in the songwriting? Uh, we all pretty much are involved. We all get together. We kind of woodshed and throw out ideas. I mean, certainly Zoltan has a lot of uh, ideas on his own as well. I mean, he's, he's pretty much the guy that starts it. Then we'll all get together and sprinkle our little magic on it and, and make it happen. Um, we usually try to bang out the music first, and then we send it to Ivan, our singer, and he pretty much just solves the puzzle. He never really changes much. We're really kind of lucky. He just always seems to do his thing over the top of it, and it seems to be working so far. So, well, When you're driving or writing your parts for the, the songs, who are you focusing on in the band primarily? Well, for me personally, I mean, I'm not one of those guys that I don't want to just be a shred drummer just for the shred's sake of it. I mean, if it requires that, I'm cool, but I always focus on the song. I want to try to accentuate hooks and make hooky drum parts. Uh, because I think it just, the more hooks you have, the more chances you're increasing for success and for somebody to relate to it, you know? 
So I always just focus on the songwriting part of it and try to make it hooky and stuff like that. We're going to take a break for a minute, and we'll be right back. back now let's talk a little bit about you as an individual player how long have you been playing drums i started when i was like six years old so that was you know not very long ago uh <laughs> no it's been a long time uh basically got my first drum kit at six my grandma bought me this sears 79 dollars special it was a it was a winner uh, was a while ago too but you know what i i, I will tell you what man I, it, as soon as I got that drum kit, I, I thought I was in KISS. I, I was determined that I was Peter Chris and in KISS at that point. So I loved it. It was the best thing ever. I couldn't play hardly at all, but my friends and I would get together and put on KISS records and act like we were playing and know what we were doing, put on the makeup, and do all this, put on shows for the uh, neighborhood 
whatever. And I remember at the end of one of my performances, I stood up through my drumstick out and hit my grandma right in the head. So that's not a nice payback for her buying the first kid. Sorry, grandma. And, uh, but all good. And from that point forward, man, I was just obsessed with drums. And then I started discovering other players that had like feet, you know, Lars Ulrich, the master of puppets record. When I heard that, I couldn't believe what I was hearing, you know, Anthrax, Slayers records. I was like, wow. So at that point, it was a, opened up a whole world for me to where I just wanted to focus on being the guy that had feet. Shred, 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 shred. And over the years of doing that, I developed uh, the feet part of it pretty good, but I also lost what it was to be a guy that could keep time and groove. So I kind of had to reteach myself how to play time. Uh, I started practicing to a click track a lot, and then I was blending shredding, double bass stuff with groove and timekeeping, and that's now I'm kind of where I'm at. What other styles of drumming are you going to look at uh, practicing then going forward? You know, I really don't know. It's just going to be a daily thing, whatever strikes me, whatever the mood strikes. So I'm I'm open to everything. I mean, I've done a lot of metal, obviously, hard rock stuff. I've done some country drumming. I wouldn't mind looking into some jazz stuff. It's a different animal, and it seems like that might be a, a step to where I don't have to always play double bass all the time. So I might investigate some jazz. Because yeah, we've been focusing on double bass work, and you're a lot more accomplished drummer than just focusing on double bass. Can you tell me a little bit more other styles that you actually play? Yeah, well, I mean, I certainly, I am a hard rock drummer too. You know, I mean, twos and fours are fun. I like doing that. I don't, it doesn't have to always be about feet. So, you know, I, I'd consider myself a reasonable, reasonable hard rock drummer, I guess. But certainly my forte would be the, the, the more metal, speedy, double bassy kind of stuff. But jazz is a, a, an area of interest for, for me, for sure. Well, recently you were on Jimmy Fallon, NBC's Jimmy Fallon show, which I thought was really cool, dude. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, I... We had just come off the Rockstar Mayhem tour, playing for anywhere up to 20,000 people a day. And I was never more nervous ever than that one time at Download Live. But this TV thing was a different animal, man, because it's a controlled, very quiet sta sound stage, and there's cameras right here for every angle. Yeah. And it's very, wow, there's no feedback from a crowd, really. So we, it was a little different thing for us, but we got through it and we, we handled it well and it was a good learning experience, but I was a little intimidated by that setup for sure. But sort of interest, have you been like working on new patterns that we're gonna see maybe in the new record? I am, you know, I mean, I've been, as weird as it sounds, I've been kind of listening to like some dance music stuff lately and not like a wimpy dance music, cool, heavy groove, industrial beat, uh, just stuff to make you bob your head and move around because I mean there's been so much done with the double bass stuff and and metal drumming that's you've heard a million times I want to keep it stimulating for me too and that's an area I really haven't tapped upon so much so I'm going to try to incorporate some heavy groove dancey vibe stuff with the double bass of course well that is a great lead into hellacious uh, your, your other CD hellacious uh, double bass band this is freaking cool I checked it out you tell me about it I just thought it was a really cool concept funny because a few years ago Zoltan and I were talking um, since he's a guitar player he always throws up drum loops and writes songs and starts song ideas to that he was like man there's really no good double bassy metal drum loop CDs out there you could totally do one and I'm thinking hey you're right so then I just took a shot at it and uh, threw it out there it's been selling consistently for me for the past few years and it's really cool it's a good writing tool for like uh, bass players or guitar players who don't have access to a drummer or a big studio to go record drums because it's a, it's loud for starters you, uh, uh, and to find somebody that can nail it the way you want it like uh, it's tough also so this is you just throw the CD in your computer and you have an instant drum track you know so it makes it real user-friendly and easy to write and record demos where can people go to find the CD if they want to purchase it you go to extreme metal loops.com which is my website and uh, you can order it there through PayPal very simple process so how did you capture that did you go into a studio or did you trigger everything no I, I went through a uh, window studio and then I went and we enhanced it some of it I had a, a guy help me mix it and everything um, but yeah, I went into the studio and banged it out in a couple days and then went home and edited myself into oblivion. <laughs> now, do you use different time tempos? Can people control that while they're writing the song? You know what? I did a few different time signatures on the CD, but it's pretty much straight up 4-4 stuff. But there's a lot of different double bass patterns. There's like 800 different grooves. So you'll find something that works. There have actually been some bands that have recorded the whole record with it and they send me copies oh. of it. Yeah, there's a band called The Shotgun Suicides, which is nice family entertainment uh, as far as the name. <laughs> But actually an amazing record, shredding cool stuff. They, they recorded all the drums with the uh, drum loop CD. Well, just for the fact it's not much different than Five Finger Death Punch. Yeah, you know, we kind of reached for the middle on that name. <laughs> no, you know, it's a funny thing because Zoltan's a big fan of the uh, martial art uh, stuff. And uh, there was a movie, I think it was actually one of the later films, the Kill Bill films, okay. that had a, it was a 
five finger lotus punch or something where you get punched and then you take a few steps and your heart explodes, but that doesn't sound really cool in a t-shirt. Five finger, yeah. and they can't really chant that in the arena. So five finger death punch is what it became. And it just, it took, at first I was like, are you serious? But then if you think about it, what's a Pearl Jam? Is that a cool name? I mean, <laughs> the music's what makes it cool. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, we went with it and it seems to be working out for us. punishing your drum set up there live. How do you keep your energy going through a set like that? Yeah, you know what I do, uh, as far as my warm up stuff and, and to keep endurance, a lot of drummers I know, they get out like pads and, st and they're banging on pads. But what to me, what you're doing is you're overworking your muscle because you're, you're using it the same way that you're doing it throughout the show anyway. So it's just like, why are you playing your set twice? That doesn't make sense to me. And I used to do that as well. But what I'm finding it's working for me now, I do a vigorous stretch exercise and like, I get hard foam rollers and I roll out my muscles and I use straps and stuff to stretch out my muscles and my legs and stuff, which not a lot of people would think about doing. And I was that guy too. I would just jump out of bed and start jumping on my drum kit and not warming up and basically break your body down for years. And then finally it catches up to you, especially when you do lengthy touring, man. Um, so I just try to stretch out and roll my muscles out and, and counteract all the stuff that I'm doing on stage. I want to kind of stretch it the opposite way and loosen it up. And I don't think a lot of guys really focus on doing stuff like that, but it, you might want to try it because it's really worked wonders for me. It's helped my body stay in shape and uh, certainly minimizing the partying when you're on schedule helps too. Which, out of the gate, you're, you're touring, woo, and you're, and you're just burning it at both ends. But sometimes you got to pull the motor car in for a pit stop, man. So you were saying you're getting sick on this tour, though, and you think it's through lack of alcohol, right? I was making a joke about it because I never get sick on tours, really, but this one I have because I haven't been drinking. And I was, I was thinking there's probably the other tours I had alcohol build up so much in my body that it killed anything that was bad, but and that's really not true, of course. Take another break. We'll be back in a little bit. This is the first song ever, and it came from you, The Bleeding. Today I'm talking with drum tech Saul Engelhardt, the drum tech for Jeremy Spencer. How are you doing today? Great, how are you doing? Killer. Now, as I understand, you've been a drum tech for a while. What other artists have you worked with? Uh, Joey Jordison for about five years. I did Dave McLean back in the day with, uh, with uh, Machine Head. I've done uh, Ken Jay from Static X and uh, Raymond Herrera from Fear Factory and so and so and so and so. Well, how long have you been doing it though? Total years? Uh, about a little bit over 15 years. And Joey has an incredible setup as well. Can you tell me a little bit about what it was like to prepare for his setup? Uh, <laughs> his setup's amazing. It's a 24 karat gold rack. It's it's real gold dipped. All his rims, all his lugs, everything. And uh, when we first got it, because his drum riser flips upside down while he's playing, we uh, bolted everything down. It took about 11 hours to bolt everything down. And then, besides that, every day the setup was pretty easy. You just made sure all the bolts were still there. You know. <laughs> We're gonna take a walk around, talk about the gear, talk a little bit about the drum set. Let me go ahead of me. What kind of heads is he using? The Evans Genera G2s, and the uh, snare is a uh, center dot. Is he using kind of any any kind of batter badge on the bass drum heads? Uh, yes, yeah, just a, the standard Danmar pad, you know, like a flam pad that keeps it, you know, just the kick pedal from going through the head. You know, that's what it's mainly for. Let's talk about Peisty cymbals. He's using alphas. Tell me a little bit of how you're you're taking care of the cymbals on the road. Um, pretty much, he doesn't, doesn't grab them a lot, so you just do a quick wipe down. You know, every couple of shows you have to do a little shine to them, you know, just because of dust and water, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, these guys usually stay pretty clean. You know, keep your eye on them, wipe them down when they need to. 
Are you using any of um, Peisty's Symbol Care products, some of the cleaning? Just personally, what I like is this stuff called uh, Metal Magic, and it's stuff that you get at a truck stop that truckers use to clean their rims, but it works really, really good on symbols. You just you wipe it on, you let it turn black, you wipe it off, everything shines right up. Now the rack, because it's chrome, really what you do is, is pretty much, if it's really dirty, you use just a little bit of Windex or something like that, some type of you know household cleaner. But um, usually, because it is chrome, you just wipe it with a, a dry rag, and it actually just kind of cleans up on its own for some reason. Which is easy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. Okay, can you give us a little advice then? How do you go about tuning a drum? Um, well, with a tension watch, I you know, finally understood that it, it is about tension. So when I change the head, I pull the top off, and I pop it around the rim, which is basically like stretching a guitar string. And uh, so it's like pre-stretching before it actually gets onto the, to the drum itself. And then put it on, tighten everything up, give everything like a nice quarter uh, tighten. Push down real hard with the palms to give it a nice stretch. And then just tune it up uh, with tension. You basically push in the middle and you slowly switch around to where uh, your wrinkles go up. Once, it, once your wrinkles completely disappear, you're really, really close there. And then you just dial it in by tapping around the lugs just to make sure everything's the same. So you, does you keep it normally kind of loose on all the drums? He's got really big and deep toms, so we don't have to keep them very loose. We can keep them moderately tight, and he still gets that really low, low end that he wants because of the depth of the toms. Now, as a player live, can you tell me a little bit about what your experience is watching him play live? What do you think about him as a player? Um, I think he's a fabulous player. He's got a great look. You know, the kit you know, is huge, and you know, he uses it well, so it makes it look really good. Um, but I'm usually staring at, at the electronics, <laughs> making sure that stuff's still working most of the time. You know, um, we give each other eye contact throughout the whole show with the motors and the electronics and everything else. So I'm kind of busy to where I don't really get to watch him all the time. But, but I do enjoy watching him play. He's a good drummer, good steady drummer. Footage there of the <laughs> yeah, wall. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're back. Now, let's talk a little bit about your drum kit. It's amazing. I haven't seen drummers go creative with their drum kits in so many years. I'm so excited to see what you're doing. So, why? What was the idea about doing this? Coming up with a set that's just stellar. You know what? It was. It's kind of a, a creation of Zoltan, man, the masterminded stage prop guy, and uh, you know our our light guy Brandon who's also he was had a big hand in building our stage setup but the drum kit we just wanted to do something that you hadn't really seen a million times you know I mean we're uh, you know the, the name of the record was War of the Answer was the tour that we're supporting it and um, so it, it just seemed to be fitting for what we were going for so we put bullets machine guns all over we just basically wanted to make the stupidest looking kit possible and I think we achieved it during the show I have to hook this air hose up which goes to a fog machine which is built in underneath the riser that runs the guns it's got the bullets all over it so if the crowd doesn't participate we just fire it no, no I'm just kidding uh, so it goes up 10 feet how often during the show uh, does this go up and down um, we do about three songs depending on the set list but usually it's the, we do three songs this rises all the way up I love it, man. It's cool. It's on a riser that goes up like 16 feet in the air, so I get to have my Peter Chris Love Gun Tour moment. <laughs> I'm running a digital performer with the rack, and then we have, um, yeah, you know, there's four motors that go onto a motor control, so I'm running those. I'm running smoke, tracks, click, and the motors at the same time. <laughs> one part of the show. It's glorious. <laughs> Battle, baby. Battle. So did you go to somebody with that concept, or did you did you design it? We did it. I mean, we, the drum tech and I, just kind of got the stuff from Gibraltar and started cramming pipes together, and just kind of came together. I mean, it was a lot of, a lot of work and a lot of broken parts in the process, but it seems to come together, and it, it, the crowd seems to dig it too. Like though, it'll be covered with a sheet, and then when you can hear it when they uncover it, they cheer for the drum kit and stuff. So it's cool, man. What about the drum riser actually itself? Now, did you design that as well, or uh, that was something that Brandon did with one of his friends, and uh, it's it's turned out really cool. I mean, it's 
It's on like four motors, so this rises all the way up. I get to have a little drum solo moment and have the ego stroke minute. So <laughs> during the last song, we bring it about halfway down during the guitar solo, and then at the end of the song, I drop him all the way to the ground. And as soon as he hits the ground, he stands up, turns around, and goes out and gives everybody a wave and a pair of drumsticks. When I say five finger, you say five finger, five finger, five finger. It's over now. Oh. Dude, thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.